but my offer still stands if you want to catch up some more. I'll be down at the beach with... Me? I don't think so. Really? I definitely would have remembered a face like yours. Girl! I would allow him to continue nonetheless. No way. Stop. No. He's not gonna do what I think he's doing either. No. <laughs> Hello, my loves. I'm Degenerate, and welcome back to 14 days with you. I very much enjoyed the last day, as you guys could tell. So I would like to do the next day, see what it has in store for me. So yeah, I did in fact like go back off camera and like try to get the bad ending and stuff. It was pretty cool. Like little, little mini jump scare. Very cute. Let's get into this day though. Oh, as you can see, there's like different saves. That's because I was experimenting and stuff. I didn't go past day two though. I would never do that. I'm not mean. Okay, let us begin. The sounds of birds chirping outside pull me from my slumber. As streaks of sunlight peek through the blinds of my window and cast a warm glow across my skin. I wanted nothing more than to reach out and close the blinds, but something, or rather someone, seemed to be stopping me. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> a familiar pair of white sleeves are wrapped securely around my waist, so I turn around only to find Ren staring intently at me from his side of the bed. Alright, <laughs> I forgot that we... Heat rises to my cheeks as the memories from last night come rushing back, and I sheepishly try to hide my reddening face in the pillows. But Ren only seems to find amusement in my state of embarrassment without his eyes crinkle while he lightly chuckles underneath the morning light. He looked far too pretty in the sunlight for a man who surely woken up more, no more than five, five minutes ago. And I had to fight the urge to take a picture of him to commit the scene to memory. Ugh, on second thought, that would have been far too creepy. Yeah, that's creepy. But I couldn't help myself from stealing one more peek at his soft demeanor before covering my face again. And without warning, Ren pulls me closer before he nuzzles his head into the crook of my neck and inhales deeply. His sudden act of affection startled me, to say the least. And despite the events that unfolded last night, he seemed far too comfortable to be acting this familiar and cuddly with me. Shut up. <laughs> Why are you being so mean? How was he acting so carefree after what he had done? Oh. oh, we. I was about to say, just only him. He played a big part of it too, bucko. It was like he thought that waking up to each other, like this was completely normal to him. Morning. Admittedly, his sleepy voice sounded rather pleasant when he spoke it and spoke it so close to my ear. But I had other, more pressing issues to concern myself over. Like? I just don't know how to casually broach the topic to with him yet. Huh? Ren, however, didn't seem to want to acknowledge the heavy air between us. And instead felt content with snuggling up to me and tickling my neck with his breath. So to try to put some distance between us, I push against his chest and attempt to strike up a conversation. Good morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> How long have you been awake? Long enough to find out that you drool in your sleep. Interesting. I do? <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Uh huh. His laughter ghosts across my cheek as he nuzzles his face into my neck once more. And his hands glide across my back to draw me impossibly close to his body. Close enough until both of our bodies are pressed against each other, and I could feel the all too familiar warmth radiating from his skin. The sensation sends a shiver up my spine, and I only hope Ren didn't notice it. Ew. Um, are you hungry? I can make us breakfast if you want. 
He seems to have a lot of hidden tattoos, if no one is seeing it. Very interesting. The one right down here. <laughs> and then... The pretty obvious... Neck ones. Just something I observed. Mm, can we stay here instead? As much as I'd love to sleep in, I don't want to waste the day. But I do. And you're very warm. And you're getting a bit too clingy. While I mean it lightheartedly, I don't think Ren took it the same way, judging from the low whine that emits from the back of his throat, and the deep sigh he releases into my skin. It takes him a moment before he finally detaches himself from me, and even from my spot on the bed, I could see the soft pout he was sporting. Mm. <laughs> And without a care in the world, Ren sits up from his side of the bed, and lets out a lengthy, drawn-out yawn, not acknowledging the blanket falling from his body, and exposing his lower half to my eyes. Almost sheepishly, sheepishly, I avert my gaze and wait until he was done. You know, we could go to that cafe near the pier for breakfast, the one that recently opened up. You mean the Driftwood Cafe? I didn't know it was open to the public yet. If you want, we could go have a look. Besides, you said you you said it yourself that you didn't want to waste the day. What better way to start than by going on a nice sunny morning walk? <laughs> he sends me a cheeky smile, but I can tell by his sarcastic tone that the last thing he wants to do is get out of bed. But seeing him act so casually and lively, it makes me wonder what what, ha what had happened to a shy persona from yesterday? Uh-oh. <laughs> Was he more comfortable around me now? I certainly would assume so after how intimate we got last night. Yeah. Of course, I still need to talk to him about that, but Ren seemed almost adamant about avoiding the topic altogether. Well, I suppose we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Thought of good food was much more tempting. Wait, where did I... Glancing over at Ren once more, I notice how he almost seems flustered as he looks around the room before lifting up the sheets and the pillows around him. He sends me a sheepish smile when our eyes... Yeah, eyes. Briefly met before he goes back to searching for whatever it was he was looking for on the floor. And I almost get rolled over when he tries to hoist the blanket around his waist and rise from the bed. I don't suppose... Do you know where my pants are? Rolling my eyes, I toss him a pillow to cover up with... <laughs> before groaning into my arm. Ooh, outside. <laughs> In the end, Ren and I decided to walk to the cafe together, considering how the weather was perfect and it wasn't that far from my apartment. Looks like he found his pants. <laughs> Turning to my side, I notice the pink-haired man tries not so subtly, tries to not so subtly, sneak side glances towards me. The arm at his side practically itches to reach out, as if I knew any better. And if I knew any better, I would have assumed he wanted to hold my hand. What the hell? But instead, he simply tucks his hand into his pocket and shoots me. Yeah, another soft smile. The weather's really nice today, huh? I would say, yes. Back to small talk, it seems. Sure is. If I had known it'd be this nice and sunny, I would have suggested spending the day at the beach instead. Ooh, beach episode? Yeah? Yeah, we could go for a swim, or maybe even check out the rock pools. It's been a while since I've been there. Oh, that does sound fun. <laughs> Hello, Leon. It's nice to see you again. D. Oh my gosh. What? At the sound of my name being called, I turn on my heels, only to find Leon running up to me with a sports bag full of what I assume to be his volleyball gear. Hey, oh sunfish. It's good to see you out and about this early. I was just on my way to the beach to meet up with Jaehyun and Tio. Wanna tag along? Tio. 
And hey, it's Ron, right? Nice to see you again, buddy. Not Ron, but okay. Oh, it's Ren, actually. Sunfish, right? Oh, yeah. Sunfish is the cheesy nickname Leon gave me when we were kids. I don't really get it either, to be honest. So, Sunfish and Ren, was it? Sorry about that. My guy. I'm not too good with names, faces too sometimes. Uh-huh. But hey, it's good to see you both again. Doing anything exciting today? If not, you can tag along with me and Angelfish and I were going on a date actually. I don't want to be called any type of fish. Angelfish? A date? Sure. Why not? We didn't say it was, but sure. I don't miss the way Ren suddenly pulls my arm closer to his side, nor the way he clings onto me as though I'd suddenly disappear. I'm going on dates again? Good for you. Oh. I'm glad to see that you're coming out of your shell. Again. Take care of them for me, won't you, bud? What do you think I've been doing ever since you moved away? Ooh, snippy. Like me, Leon barely seems to notice Ren's mumbling as he rests an arm over my shoulder and starts tugging me in the direction of the beach. Ren, on the other hand, still latches onto my arm, but doesn't seem to move. Can't believe my little sunfish is out there in the dating scene again. I feel like a proud father. Oh, please, we're basically the same age. I feel like a proud adoptive father. Right, because that's better. Leon pretends to wipe a tear away from his eyes as he leans further into my shoulder. And it was only then I, that I noticed Ren wasn't following us. We're going to the beach? We'd, I didn't accept it. What the heck? Turning around, I reach out to grab his hand instead to tuck him along. <laughs> he immediately seems to perk up at the action and entwines his fingers with mine before falling into step. You mad, bro? All right, as fun as it is to catch up with my proud adoptive father, who's the same age as me, which makes things kind of weird, Ren and I do need to get going. Oh yeah, of course. I didn't mean to take up so much of your time. He unhooks his arm from my shoulder and inclines his head towards the beach one more time. But my offer still stands if you want to catch up some more. I'll be down at the beach with Is it too late to change my mind? <laughs> is it too late? Cause there's no way this is to you. <laughs> there's just no way. Ah, uh, speak of the devil. Ooh. Much woo. Much like Jane. His name is Theodore? Is that actually his name? I feel like it should be Theodore. Nah, he different. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying Tio. Was another friend I made in university. But if I was being honest here, I don't I didn't think he's actually enrolled in anything. He just showed up ever so often to keep his attendance rate up. And to antagonize some of the students and stuff. As if reading my mind, Tio practically runs into Ren the sole purpose of sending him tumbling into a metal railing behind him. But luckily Ren manages to catch his footing at the last second, sending Tio an annoyed scowl of, of his own. Oh shit, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not sure I had missed such a brightly colored child children's mascot. Huh? Alright, there's no need for that here. Look at you breaking it up. Despite Leon's tone, Theo barely pays the shorter male any mind. Seemingly far more interested in Ren instead. Let me guess, you're dressed up as Benny the Buttercup? My four-year-old cousin would love you. <sighs> Knock it off, mate. Knock it off, mate! That's him. What's your problem? Don't know, what's yours? Ooh, did I miss something? What the hell? 
I could practically feel the tension between the two grow, so I decided to step in. Maybe you should introduce each other first before you try glaring at each other to death. Tio, this is Ren. He's my... Lover? Boyfriend? I don't know. Well... Ah, thank you for helping me out there. <laughs> I'm their boyfriend. Well, that was certainly one way to put it. Especially without discussing it with me beforehand and asking for my input. But then again, we did sleep together last night. And I still hadn't been able to broach the subject with him. At his worst, I shoot run a confused glance. The determination look- No, the termination. But the determined look on his face had me biting back my words. Okay then. Anyways, this is Theo. He's... Uh oh. I have to respond to this. Fine. How will you respond? He's a friend from university? He's my ex-boyfriend. He's just a fling? I've never seen this man in my life. It's true, I haven't. Um... I feel like it's gonna reveal that he was my ex anyways. I'm just gonna say he's a friend. Oh, you consider us friends? That's real cute. I bet it is. Are we not friends? You always used to show up to some of my classes at university. Which was weird because I'm pretty sure we studied different things. Maybe I just wanted to see you. Oh. How uncharacteristically thoughtful of him. That was a mouthful. Or see what you were wearing underneath. Never mind. Okay, enough. <laughs> Look, why don't we just drop the issue? You really need to stop trying to pick fights with everyone. Don't get your pennies in a twist. I seriously, seriously doubt Buttercup's capable of harming a fly. Let alone able to throw a decent punch. Where is this attitude coming from? Do you have stress pent up? I can help you with that, bro. You just need to chill for right now. What is this deal? You can drop the nickname. Nah. But I think Dollface over here should drop you instead. Nice. Real slick. Besides the nickname, it's, it's kind of cute. My sister style pretty well, don't you think, Buttercup? I could see Ren's hand clench into a fist as he advances towards Tio. But thankfully, Leon steps in once more. Seriously, why don't we all cool off, yeah? I think we're getting a bit too heated. Mm. Look, we're going... We're gonna go head down to the beach. I don't miss the way Leon sends the... Bro. Tia. A sharp glare. Are you sure you don't want to join us? I promise to make sure that Tio stays on his best behavior. Nah. With the way he's acting now, it's just gonna continue. Sorry. What? Oh. Sorry, Leo. But I've already made plans with Ren. And I seriously doubt they'll be able to get along. You know how Tio can get. Yeah, you've got a point there. Alright then. He leans closer to me, almost as if he didn't want the other two eavesdropping. If anything happens, I'll be in the area. Just come find me, okay? Sure. I will. Thanks, Leon. I give his arm a soft squeeze and turn my attention back to Ren. But by the way he looks at us, I can only assume that he didn't like how close I was standing to my childhood friend. Oh. Though that could have also been because Tio was still around, and honestly, I couldn't blame him. Regardless, I reach for his hand once more and tug him towards the cafe, making a point of ignoring Tio's crass words as we went along. Bye. I know I'll be seeing you again. I barely notice how Ren's mood immediately changes when my attention is back on him, and he follows along like a lost puppy. That was rather interesting. We eventually arrive at the Driftwood Cafe, and the smell of fresh pastries and brewed coffee flood my senses as if, as it wafts through the open windows. And it, and just as I thought, the cafe looked as though it had only recently opened, 
though it didn't seem as busy or crowded as I anticipated. Pulling me from my thoughts, Ren ushers me into one of the empty tables before he goes off to make an order, with a pleased look on his face. I was kind of expecting the game to be like, oh, you guys used to date or something like that. But us choosing how, what he is, very different. It was a bit strange how he didn't want to look at the menu first, but I chalked it up to him wanting to surprise me. He's barely gone for five minutes before he returns once more, taking a seat in front of me with a whiff. A comfortable silence washes over us, and I watch as he absentmindedly fiddles with the ends of his hair. Was he still concerned about what Tio said, about his appearance earlier? Maybe it'd be a good idea to take his mind off of it. Hey, Ren. Almost immediately, he perks up with, a wide, with wide eyes. How did you manage to keep your hair so fluffy? It always looks so cool. Oh, so good. Ren seems to flush instantly in my words, and he sheepishly ducks his head all lower to hide his reddening cheeks. Do you like it? I usually just angle a blow dryer below my chin and blast the heat, <laughs> and it just stays like that afterwards. Oh, so you don't need to use any products or anything? Not really. Just when I thought he got over his timid personality, it slowly came crawling back. Was this really who he was? Ren must have taken my silence as a lack of response, seeing as he tries striking up another conversation. So, work's going good for you, huh? Finally got that promotion? Yeah, I did. I was honestly surprised when I first got my promotion, considering how it only moved back I only moved back here recently. But Eleanor's been really helpful by showing me the ropes and Wait. How did you know I got a prom I got promoted? Your coworker told me about it yesterday after you left. Eleanor, right? She seemed really proud of you. Speaking of <laughs> Where is she? You know what would be so cool? Is if she popped up. Anyways, what were you saying about her showing you the ropes? I barely noticed how he managed to change the conversation back to me, as I re-encountered recounted all the times Eleanor helped me through my first week of working at the library. It evidently reached the point where it felt like I had been talking for hours, and it wasn't until something caught my eye that I finally stopped. What? How will you respond? <laughs> oh, look at that cute puppy. That goth style is pretty cool. You've got something in your hair. Sorry, what were you saying? Uh-oh. That goth style is pretty cool. What are we doing there? I can kind of tell... Um... That... Because I, when I did the other options... For clothing in the first day... I was very curious to see how he would respond. Since he responded to my comfy clothes. I went and I picked... Something... What was it? It was like alternative or something. And then he responded to it in a specific way. I can, so with that, it tells me that he probably has that specific style. Like the whole goth alternative thing. But he like, doesn't do it. Like he doesn't go through with it. Because of our liking towards this anime character. So... I got that right, definitely. Because look at this. The choice is here again. And then what he says to the outfit that I wear. Mmm, connecting dots. Very curious about this choice, so I'm going to pick it. Goth style. Plus, his nails are black. Very contrast. And then the tattoos I saw, so... I'm not a silly goose. He also glances out the window and follows my line of sight before leaning on the person walking by. They were decked out head to toe with heavy makeup, platform boots, and clothing you'd only find in stores like Not Topic. Oh, Not Tropic, whoopsies. <laughs> Ren's eyes seemed to follow their form until they're out of sight, and the impassive look on his face made me curious. Yeah, it's, it is, it is kinda cool. Do you like that kind of style? Because I always thought you preferred something softer. Order 25? <laughs> oh, that's us. Wait right here. I'll be right back. Good. Before I could get a word in, Ren was jumping out of his seat and 
meandering his way towards the kiosk. It really was a sight to behold, seeing Ren tower over most of the other customers who were waiting in line. How lucky we are. Even the cashier herself, who seemed to be at least six feet tall, had to crane over, crane her neck upwards just to look at him. Ooh. Before I could blink twice, Ren was already on his way back with a large tray full of delicious food. Nice. He seats himself back in his original spot with a pleased smile and begins to lay out the dishes in front of me. Oh, is this? <gasps> How will you respond? A delicious looking scone, a chocolate croissant, a big slice of cake, a sugar cookie, a chocolate croissant. A croissant with chocolate filling sits next to my beverage. And I almost heard my stomach rumble at the sight. Ooh. How did everyone know that this was my favorite thing to order? Granted, it wasn't like I've been to the Driftwood Cafe before. This is usually what I'd order at any other cafe. I like when things are like filled with like chocolate, you know, jelly, as I said. It was, and it's, it was honestly like he could read my mind. And what was even more mind-boggling was that he didn't even need to look at the menu beforehand. It was just like he knew. What's up? Don't forget your drink. Ren shoots me another gentle smile. Hmm. Before placing my drink before me. No way! The drink he placed in front of me, it was... <laughs> How will you respond? A cup of coffee. A steaming latte. A can of soda. A fruity smoothie. Ooh. Honestly, out of all these, I'd probably go for the smoothie. Nice. The inviting aroma of fruit floods my senses, and that alone was what assured me that Ren ordered my favorite smoothie. It's like the ones I usually bring on my work, I'm on my way to work sometimes. I hope this is okay. Unfortunately, this cafe doesn't really have much to offer. Judging from the menu I saw online. Ah, so that's how he knew what to order. I even tried asking for napkins earlier, but I didn't think I don't think they heard me. Maybe I should try again? I almost felt bad for him, but I also felt grateful for ordering me something that I'd normally eat at a cafe. I make sure everything is on the table before putting the tray inside. Outside. And it was then when I noticed that he'd ordered himself. Oh, not that I had to pick. <laughs> On his plate sat a strawberry sweet roll alongside a cup of coffee that was an alarming shade of black. He seems to pick up on my inquisitive stare. If the innocent tilt of his head was anything to go by. Do you want my meal instead? We can swap if you want, I don't mind. This was supposed to be a date, right? Deciding to tease him a little, I shoot run a sly grin. That's okay, but you could offer me a bite instead. Yeah. Ren almost seems to combust on the spot as his cheeks turn red, and he almost chokes on his own spit. He looks down at, at his food before glancing back at me, only to look down once more to scoop up a bite-sized piece of his food. I watch as Ren's cheeks turn a deep shade of red while he brings his fork closer to me, and not wanting to be seen as a coward, I lean in to take a bite. Mmm. Delicious. His eyes widen almost immediately, and he seems super hyper focused on the way my mouth wraps around the fork before I lick my lips and let out a pleased hum. Look at you. Mmm, it's yummy. Try some. The pink haired man seems to have an awkwardly long staring contest with his own fork before scooping up yet another small piece of cake piece and taking a bite. <laughs> this is so dumb because it's like bro no way this is getting you to act like this do you remember what we did hours prior right Ren's cheeks are still scarlet red and he seems almost fidgety with how his legs keep bouncing under the table I decided to take pity on him and not tease him for it with a knowing smile I start digging into my own meal with a pleased hum Mm. 
event eventually we ended up finishing our meals and decided to go to do a bit of window shopping to pass the time I had nothing else to do today and Ren seemed insistent on spending the rest of his time with me so I agreed we passed by a few clothing stores ice cream stands surfboard rentals and many other interesting buildings though nothing really caught my eye but just as I thought I'd lost all hope one store in particular catches my eye what is it? Ooh! In one of the display windows, I spotted this cute little rabbit plushie in the style of Haruka's likeness. I mean, it even came with his limited- with this limited edition sorcerer outfit and everything. Oh! I couldn't believe they were selling these things here, of all places. And at such a cheap price, too. Oh, hello! Who are you? Ren seems to notice that I was not so subtly gawking at, but before we could enter the store, the cashier walks in front of the display. The display stand and blocks our view. She drops a box of miscellaneous items at her feet and begins stocking the shelf next to the plushies. Before she finally notices standing by the window. I don't miss the way her eyes widen at Ren, obviously taking an immediate liking to him, and almost shamelessly pushing a strand of her hair behind her ear. Before giving a small wave. Do they know each other? Sneaking a glance at the taller man beside me, I noticed how Ren wasn't even paying attention any attention to her. Instead, keeping himself busy by scratching at his jaw and kicking at the stray cobblestones. Cobblestone rocks by his feet. Um but the cashier seemed to seemed adamant about getting Ren's attention, considering how she felt the need to abandon her spot by the shelves and make her way towards us. <laughs> Olivia! Hi there, welcome to the Seaside Trinkets. My name is Olivia. Can I help you with anything? Oh no, we're just looking around, but thanks for... We recently got a new batch... New beachwear merch if you're interested in checking them out. Was she seriously ignoring me? Hmm. Now, if I kicked her in the shin, what would happen then? Oh, you look kind of like someone I know. Have we met before? Have we went to the same school? Hmm. <laughs> me? I don't think so. Really, I definitely would have remembered a face like yours. Girl! <laughs> Actually, now that I got a good look at you, I watch as she shamelessly takes in Ren's appearance before crossing her arms over her chest and leaning back. You also remind me of one of those characters from a cartoon that's been getting a lot of traction here. Apparently one of the locations from that show is based on Coraline Bay's main beach. Are you talking about Attack on Giant? If she scoots again, I'm gonna die. Is the name- is that the name of it? Then yeah. I don't really know much about these- those cartoons, but our company recently started selling some stuff for it to entice the tourists. Do you want to come inside and take a look? Huh. Red doesn't seem to answer her question, and instead casts an inquisitive glance in my direction. It was like he was asking for my opinion, and I can only assume it was because he knew about my interest in anime. It was thoughtful of him to do that, but I kind of wanted him to tell that rude worker off instead. Wait. Did I really want him to do that? What was wrong with me? Oh no. You're only human. Calm down, buckaroony. I'm sure that the cashier just took interest in him. And there was nothing wrong with that. It's not like we were a couple. But we were supposed to be on a date right now? And Red did declare himself as my boyfriend earlier. I just assumed he said that in order to get Tio off my back. Does that mean... Was he feeling the same way as me? <gasps> was jealousy on his mind when he, when we talked to Leo and Tio earlier? I wasn't sure how to feel about this new discovery. D? Huh? Do you want to go look at the items? You still got a bit of time to kill. I knew she was gonna do it, I'm gonna stab her. Let <laughs> me calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Here, why don't why don't I show you the most ex the most recent stock? We haven't shown this to the general public yet. 
I'm sure you'll love it. Ooh. Without warning, Olivia was was that her name? Reaches out for Ren's arm and practically drags him inside the store. He lets out a surprise sound before leaning back and trying to grab hold of my own arm as well. But I was just out of reach. Oh no. Oh no. We're just, just out of reach. There was nothing else I could do but watch as Ren helplessly gets pulled into the store. This is so annoying. Just a little bit though. It's back in the- here in the stock rooms? Hmm. Usually we don't lock customers downstairs, but you're a real hottie, so I'll let you take a sneak peek. No, actually, I'm- I'm good. <laughs> don't worry, we won't get caught. I'm sure your partner wouldn't- won't mind if I borrow you for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. How could you say that? Rage is boiling up inside me because it's like, huh? So you know we're here together. Okay. The wink she sends him would have made anyone feel uncomfortable. And had Ren turned around, I would have seen the pissed off look on his face. But instead, he leans in close to her face and whispers in a hushed tone that I could barely hear from my spot outside the store. If they weren't standing there right now, I would have shoved your desperate ass down the staircase without a second thought. And right now it's really f***ing tempting. What? What? <laughs> From their current position it looked like- it looked as though they were having a really intimate conversation. And I felt the sudden urge to walk away. Oh, to look away. Why was I getting so bothered over this? I know we aren't exactly together, but Ren shouldn't be off flirting with other people while on a date with someone else. Who said he was flirting? Oh, well, oh. We technically can't hear it. So, yeah. I would never want to be in a relationship with someone who wasn't considerate of my feelings. And up until now, I honestly thought Ren would have had a chance. I guess I was wrong. But still, there was this nagging voice in the back of my head that kept telling me not to give up on him so easily. Ren was the one who confidently stood his ground when Tio got a bit suggestive. So maybe I should do the same? Would he even mind? Before I can stop myself, my feet start to move on autopilot as I march towards the two of them and reach for Ren's sleeve. I give it a hesitant tug, and I swear I could almost feel the relief wash over his body because of it. This girl is goofy! Oh my gosh. Ren's entire demeanor seems to change in that moment, and he turns to me with a relieved smile on his soft features. I don't really have any interest in this story. Can we go somewhere else? Yeah, of course. Wait, hold on. No. What am I holding on to? I'm not falling. I'm not falling. Like, come on. Ren carelessly shoves Olivia. Olivia's outstretched hand aside and gently places an arm over my shoulder instead. And just like that, he's already guided me out of the store and back into the busy street. <clears throat> yeah. And we're gonna fuck later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can hear Olivia sputter out confused sounds as she watches the two of us leave. And I suddenly felt guilty for causing a rift between them. Why? Moving on. That was so stupid. She's like, oh, your partner wouldn't mind, right? So you know I'm here and you still. Bitches like that, they need to be neutered. Spayed, whatever. You need to have your reproductive organs ripped out. You don't deserve it. No way. Get it fixed, hon. Bye! No matter how many times I try to brush it aside, I still couldn't get my mind off of what had just occurred earlier. What if... What if Ren was interested in her? <laughs> oh no! Then we start being a yandere. Kill that bitch. Granted, he was probably he probably shouldn't have been blatantly flirted with her while on a date with me. 
can't believe we still, we still think that. But he wasn't exactly the most confident guy. He was real confident, threatening to kill her. Or prevent her from having children. Push her down the stairs, that's so funny. Would he still be able to talk to her again if things didn't work out between us? No, I shouldn't be thinking like that. Peering up to gauge his expression, I noticed how he didn't really look all that upset about leaving her. If anything, he seemed rather content to be walking down the street with his fingers entwined with mine once more. I could feel him give a hand- I would give my hand a protective squeeze as he looks down at me with his soft blue eyes, and all of my worries somehow melt away. Maybe I did make the right choice after all. It might have been selfish, but it was worth having Ren look at me with such a gentle expression. Eventually, the sun starts to set but behind the ocean as Ren and I continue to walk along the beach walk. Most of the conversation was geared towards me and my interests again. But every time I try to learn more about Ren, he only seems to divert the conversation back to me. But the more I focused on this odd behavior, the more I began to pick up on his social habits as well. I learned that Ren would subtly pick up, pick at his sleeves of his cardigan whenever he got nervous. Or how he'd scratch his, at his jaw whenever the conversation strayed down the path he didn't feel comfortable with. Mm. His little quirks told me more about himself than the dead-end conversations that only led back to me. And I was content with knowing more about him than I did yesterday. Ren no longer felt like a stranger I had met at the library. Or rather someone I couldn't consider a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because friends just, you know, have sexual intercourse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, just read, bro. It's right here. Except friends don't spend the night together and get jealous whether they flirt with someone else. Whenever. Jeez, what's wrong with me? I could, it's barely been two days, and I was already contemplating whether or not I truly saw Ren in a romantic light. Was I going too fast? All these thoughts were starting to get a little- a bit overwhelming. Hello? Huh? He's spacing out on me again. There's that look again. He keeps peering down at me with such adoration in his eyes. And if I didn't know any better, I would think he was already halfway in love with me. Halfway? Halfway? But that was a very conceited thought and probably wasn't even true. Oh my god, we're dumb. I was just thinking about things. Are you going to share those things with the rest of the class? Shut up. He sends me a playful smile and a gentle nudge to my side and I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> when did we become so comfortable with each other? And when did he lose his stutter? Ooh. It's nothing really, maybe a bit embarrassing, but... While I was wondering... How do you feel about... My sentence gets cut short when a drop of rain lands on my cheek. Oh no, rain! Instinctively, I look up to find myself wondering how I didn't notice those dark clouds in the sky sooner. Ooh, rain! Oh, look at the pretty. <laughs> all of a sudden, more droplets fall down until it's all but pouring rain and forcing everyone in the air to find cover. Over here! Come with me! Red doesn't seem to pay much attention when he grabs me by my hand and pulls me underneath one of the awnings of a nearby building. He shields me from the rain with his body, and I couldn't help but feel tiny with the way his arms caged me in as he rests them against the wall. Last time I was being sheltered from the rain by a pink-haired individual, they called me a monkey. And they were a ghost, so, yeah. We look at each other in silence for a brief moment before erupting in laughter. Perhaps it was of the adrenaline from all the panicked running, or the fact that Ren's hair was starting to lose its fluffiness. But I couldn't hold back from letting out a fit of giggles. 
This only seemed to spur Ren on as well, until we're both wheezing out of our lungs and gulping down air. I can't remember the last time I ran that fast. Me too. The looming sound of thunder echoes from afar and drowns out our laughter until we're both silent once more. Once we both calm down, Ren moves me further away from the rain before casting a glance behind him. We'd hear a buzz and umbrella so we can get out of this rain. But you'll get soaked. Tis a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I roll my eyes at this corny joke and send him off with an amused smile. Hopefully no one comes up to me and starts talking to me. That'd be awful. He doesn't look back before he makes a mad dash out onto the rain. And down the street towards the closest convenience store. Well, the rain only seems to get heavier the moment he leaves. And I find myself pressing even further against the wall. Behind me to avoid the recoil of the rain bouncing off the pavement. There wasn't much for me to do while I wait for Ren to return. Aside from watching people scramble around for shelter. And just like that, the carefree sounds of laughter echoing from down the street capture my attention. As I watch Leo, Theo, and Jay all run to cover with their life dependent on it. It seems as though their beach outing got cut short as well. Glancing back once more, I barely make out the figure of Leon using his bag as a makeshift umbrella as he ducks under one of the awnings of an ice cream stand. All while Theo and Jay trail behind at a leisurely pace, kicking and splashing water at each other in the rain. Children. I had to look away the moment Theo started to remove his shirt and had an inkling that it was so that he could show off. <laughs> and knowing Jae Hyun, he'd follow along like a mindless grunt. Because that's what he always does when it comes to his friends. A part of me felt like calling out to the group to see if I could wait out the storm alongside them. But they all seemed to be enjoying themselves and I didn't want to get in between that. Plus, I did promise Ren that I'd wait for him here. Even if he was taking his sweet time. Was he ever going to return? Damn. There was still no sign of him or his comfy looking cardigan. And I was beginning to wonder if he really did ditch me. After all, it must have been more than 15 minutes by now. What if he got caught up with something? Or what if he went back to see that cashier lady? Stop it. Her store did happen to be on the same street, but after spending the afternoon with Ren and getting to know him, I concluded that he wasn't a person to do such a thing. Yeah, because we're not stupid. Well, let me not say that. Plus, that'd be a really low blow considering that he was the one who offered to take me out on a date today. Although, if I was being honest with myself, it did seem as though they had chemistry. Especially with how she looked at him and touched his arm. As though it was the most natural thing in the world. She apparently knew him as well. Or at least he looked recognizable enough. Why did that thought make my blood boil? I wonder. Thankfully the rain was there to cool me off. <laughs> as well as soak the ends of my outfit and make everything feel damp and uncomfortable. Was Ren really coming back? I shouldn't- it shouldn't take this long to buy an umbrella. How will you respond? Wait for- Wait for Ren or walk home alone? Oh my gosh. Maybe something did come up. I'm sure he'll come back. And as if on cue, I spot a familiar patch of pink hair from within the misty rain. Frantically sprinting with an umbrella in one hand and a bag under the other. Ah, he almost slams into me before stopping just in time, and I could tell by the way he was wheezing that he ran all the way back here without stopping. Sorry, I thought I almost lost you there for a second. It's so hard to see you in this weather. Jeez, Ren, you took so long. I almost wanted to cuss him out for taking, well, well over 20 minutes. Just to buy a single umbrella, but the genuine, genuinely apologetic look on his features made me hold my tongue. Uh oh. Sorry, I ran into your friends from earlier, which took forever for me to shake them off. And then the conversation's convenience store ended up closing early due to the sudden weather change. 
So then I had to go to that awful souvenir shop with the obnoxious and clingy cashier again. And <laughs> he was talking a mile a minute, and I was worried he'd end up biting his tongue. Gently, I raise a hand to signal him to calm down, and his intense monologue soon comes to a halt. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry about making you wait so long, but... Ta-da! I did manage to get an umbrella, among other things as well. Hee <laughs> hee. He gives it a small twirl in his hands, sending droplets of water all over the place. We can start heading back home if you want, unless you want to go somewhere specific. <laughs> How will you respond? We can go to my apartment. We can go to your apartment. Where do you wanna go? Forget it, I'm going home alone. Meh meh meh. Big baby. Let's um... Let's be safe and save here. I think this one is important. I wanna see where he wants to go. Well, my place isn't far. We could wait out the storm there if you'd like. I can even have a heater and dryer we could use. We won't even need it. <laughs> we won't even need it. Do you want to know why we won't need it? Because... The image of me sitting in front of a warm, cozy heater was too hard to resist. And ended up agreeing with Ren's suggestion. Mission accomplished. Despite the heavy downpour of rain, we managed to make it to Ren's apartment, complex in one piece. I guess he really wasn't lying when he said his apartment wasn't far from mine. But judging from the pristine interior and fully functioning elevator, his building seemed to be in far better shape compared to mine. Yeah, our doors don't even lock properly. The other video ride could have been a little less awkward, though, if it weren't for the slow ascending and tacky music. Or for the fact that Ren deemed it appropriate to share or to shake his hair like a wet dog and get water droplets everywhere. Ooh, this is the inside. Once the elevator doors slide open, I was immediately met with a grin doise? Yes. Corridor, a large and large spacious doors. And I found myself wondering how much it costs to live in a place like this. Don't look too hard at how messy my place is, okay? Is it messy? I wasn't expecting to have someone over today, so I didn't bother cleaning up. I'm getting a weird sense of deja vu. Thankfully, I don't have any white-haired neighbors who like to take their plants on walks. In a way. Actually, now that I think about it. It's a bit strange, but no one lives on this floor aside from me. Good. Good. I'm not really sure why, but I'm not gonna complain. Good. I'm not either. I can make as much noise as I want, and no one would notice. Good. <laughs> Ren shoots me a mischievous grin, and I find myself wondering what he meant by that. That dumb. Like loud music and stuff? Movies? Huh. Yeah. Something like that. Huh. He unlocks the door with some electronic card attached to his keychain. And the moment the door swings open, I let out an audible gasp. <gasps> Ren doesn't seem phased by the slightness. As he flicks on the lights and walks into his own home. <laughs> but I could only stand at the entrance to a, his foyer in shock. Yes, foyer. He had a whole damn foyer in his apartment. Was this even an apartment? Surely a penthouse would have made more sense. Holy shit, Ren. Is there something wrong? What is it? One of the decor is kind of tacky. But it came with the apartment, and I haven't found the time to do anything about it yet. I'm sorry, but... Are you a long-lost heir of a billionaire or something? This place is huge. And oh my god, is that marble? No, I just... I get paid a lot for my job. 
enough to afford rent, I guess. Oh, at least. You know, I don't think I've asked you this yet, but what exactly is your job? Uh, my job is... I guess you could say I'm a programmer? I don't know. I just take on a few jobs every so often. Nothing super fancy or anything. Nothing super fancy. Ren, you have marble flooring. Leaving the newly discovered programmer at the entrance, I curiously venture further into his apartment. Marble's a pain in the ass to clean, too. <laughs> Do you want some slippers? The floor can get cold, and your shoes are probably soaked, right? Turning around, I notice Ren opening a small closet and pulling out a pair of dark house slippers. He looks at me with a curious expression, but makes no effort to hand them over. Only if you want them. I'll take them, but only because they might be duchy. Uh-huh. Ren lets out a puff of laughter through his nose at my joke, but doesn't seem to deny it. <laughs> Is it boot like Gucci? Duchi? As I put them on, I noticed how they were in my exact size. And it made me wonder if he had bought a bunch of expensive house slippers in various sizes. Nah. But as funny as, a, as that imaginary was... Oh, imaginary. Imagery was. How did Ren accurately guess my shoe size without seeing my feet? Huh. <laughs> Here, why don't I show you to the bathroom? I'll find you something to wear in the meantime, while your clothes are in the dryer. Or would you prefer a towel? Sorry, I don't usually invite people over. Seeing his timid side resurface once more gave me a sudden urge to tease him. How will you respond? Just a towel? Is it Egyptian cotton? <laughs> don't you have any friends? Am I your first house guest? Uh. Huh. The Egyptian cotton one is pretty funny. Nice little joke um i'm not gonna ask about the whole friend thing that's rude just a towel obviously is more uh you know implications are there and then the first house guess is like i feel like it's a middle ground of some sort the Egyptian cotton got me, so I'm gonna take that one. <laughs> Egyptian cotton? What's that? It's kind of in the name. I don't think my towels come from Egypt. I mean, that's pretty far away. And I can only imagine how expensive the shipping would be. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> he acted like he was considering the question, and I had to roll my eyes. Especially with the comment on shipping being expensive. What were shipping costs to him if he could afford a place like this? So, uh, anyways... I'll show you to the bathroom. You can use whatever you want in there. Nothing is off limits. I feel like we're gonna find hair dye in there. That's gonna be so funny. Because it confirms... Some things. First, it was offering to spend the night at my place. Then it was asserting himself as my boyfriend in front of my friends. He literally doesn't care about personal boundaries. I was beginning to think that Ren didn't really seem to mind when it came to me invading his personal bubble as well. Though he still seemed pretty standoffish around Tio, Jay, and Leon. And it took him a while to warm up to Eleanor back at the library. Once again, it would have been nice to see her today. He even seemed indifferent when he first met Violet, but I figured it was only because he was shy. Speaking of being shy, I still noticed how Ren didn't seem to be switching up his personality as much anymore. And I was beginning to think that he was showing me his real side. Mm -hmm. Up until now, everything felt real and genuine, and I found that we could bounce back witty retorts between each other more easily. So every now and again, he might slip up and stutter, but I just assumed it was because my teasing made him flustered. So maybe the timid side of him was genuine after all? But I'll leave some clothes for you outside and put the plushie I bought for you in your room. Huh? 
Oh, yeah, thanks. I don't remember that happening. I c oh, wait, did he get it? <sighs> when he was getting the umbrella? Great, I was zoning out again and completely missed half of what he was saying. Something about clothes and a plushie he bought? He was talking about that Haruka plushie I was eyeing up earlier? I mean, he was carrying a gift bag from the souvenir shop earlier. Yeah, I'm a genius. Did he really buy me that toy? Ren, however, doesn't seem to pick up on my confusion, though. And inv invitingly, invitingly, <laughs> opens the bathroom door for me with a soft smile. And so, without trying to make things awkward, I quickly slip inside and lean against the door for support. Which was fortunate for me because one sweep of the bathroom had me stumbling back in surprise. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> uh, last time I was in a bathroom. <laughs> and I'm not talking about mushroom, man. I'm talking about bootleg all my... Even his restroom looked expensive. I was afraid of touching anything, fearing I'd accidentally break it and end up paying for it. I glanced around again. I noticed how his counter countertops seemed to be void of any dental care, hairbrushes, and skincare products. Though a few bottles of concealer and an open box of hair dye sat in the corner near the sink. <laughs> well, I guess that answers my burning question on whether or not he naturally had pink hair. But now it made me wonder, if Ren does dye his hair, then what was his natural hair color? There were still so many things I don't know about his about that soft looking guy. And I was beginning to question whether coming here was a good idea or not. Shut up. With a sigh, I decide not to waste any more time thinking about irrelevant things and instead turn my attention back to the shower. Quickly stripping out of my clothes, I jump into the unnecessarily large glass booth and turn the water on. Take a nice hot shower. Glancing at Ren's shelf of, albeit, hair products, oh, limited, I couldn't help but notice that one brand in particular just so happened to be the exact same as mine. Did we use the same shampoo? He didn't really smell like me, but maybe that was because I wasn't paying much attention. I mean, who randomly smells people out of the blue anyway? <laughs> Him, obviously. Shaking my head at such a silly notion, I begin to scrub away the lingering smell of rain from my body and quickly finish washing up. Bundled up in a warm towel, I crack open the large door and poke my head out into the hallway. True to his word, Ren left a small pile of clothing outside the bathroom, neatly stacked and propped against the side of the wall. Bringing the contents back inside, I noticed that one piece of clothing in particular was rather, was a rather comfy looking hoodie. But the design in the front, however, was rather morbid looking and didn't really suit Ren vibes. Maybe from a horror film or something? Eh. Chugging my shoulders, I put the hoodie on and instantly get enveloped by the sheer amount of fabric. Ooh. I mean, it made sense considering Ren's large and lanky frame. But this was just absurd. <laughs> I had to stifle a laugh from the amusing sight of the fogged up mirror. But I had to admit that the soft fabric felt nice and warm against my skin. Even the scent that came from it felt oddly comforting somehow. Turning back to the remaining clothes in the pile, I gently pick up the next item and, and try to put it on. The gray sweatpants didn't seem to fit the length of my legs, despite the number of times I tried to roll up the elastic. But luckily, Ren has thought enough, was thoughtful enough to give me other alternatives. A dark pair of shorts seemed like the better option, especially since it came with a drawstring and deep pockets. I love stuff with pockets. It's amazing. One time I had a dress. And it had pockets. I was so happy. <laughs> I think I still do? I don't know. But pockets are the best. I love pockets. Because I don't like carrying on a purse. That's so exhausting. 
All I need is my phone, my headphones, my wallet, and my keys. And all that can fit in pockets, various pockets. I need pockets. <sighs> pockets. <laughs> Once I was fully dressed, I step out of the bathroom and aimlessly walk around until I hear the faint sounds of a TV playing. Feeling curious, I follow the source of the sound down the hallway. Aching news. <laughs> A sudden storm hits the bay as gale force winds and <coughs> knock over street signs and even awnings. <coughs> Just believe <laughs> that the sudden change in weather will die down soon and to stay safe indoors. I continue to follow the noise until it suddenly cuts out and changes into a glaring monotone sound. Indicating that the television was a lost all signal. And soon enough, I found myself in Ren's spacious lounge room. Aside from the TV, the rest of the lights were off, but I could still make out most of the dark shapes within the room with ease. It was just as ostentatious ooh, as the rest of the house, though I couldn't help but feel like it lacked any form of life. Lacked. It just didn't seem like someone actually lived here. The furniture was gaudy yet tasteless. There was hardly any personal decoration or colors. And there was nothing that really screamed Ren to me. There were no personal touches, photos, items, hobbies, nothing. Just tacky furniture and the bland smell of something sterile. If I was being honest, it gave off the same vibes as a dentist clinic or a hospital. I mean, he did mention recently moving in. Maybe that's why. Ooh. What happened to- <laughs> The concealer in the bathroom! You mischievous little fuck. Look at it. You can still kind of see it. Right here. Just a little bit. And then the little one right here. Kind of. Yeah. Concealer! Yep. Who moved in? Surprised by the sudden voice, I spin on my heel only to find Ren coming out of from the, one of the hallways with a new set of comfy clothing. He seemed much more at ease like this, especially with the gentle expression on his face. I watch as he takes a respectful glance at my attire, before sheepishly averting his attention to the ends of the, his sleeve. Sorry, that's the smallest pair of clothing I, that I own. It looks really good on you, though. Oh, thanks. You can even keep them if you want. The sound of thunder rumbling in the distance cuts off Ren's mumbling. An involuntary step closer to him. Without missing a beat, he reaches out and rests a protective hand on my shoulder to steady me. Ren idly glances out the window before turning his undivided attention back to me once more. Only this time with a determined look. It's really pouring, huh? Yeah. I could only nod my head at his words, suddenly feeling sheepish all of a sudden. I really should have checked the weather forecast before I went out today. But to be fair, it didn't look as though it starts spontaneously raining when I left my apartment this morning. And I guess I was enjoying my time with Ren to the point where I didn't even realize the weather was turning sour. Angel? Sorry, what did you say? I just asked if you wanted to stay the night here, you know, seeing how hard it, it's raining out there, and your clothes haven't finished drying yet. It'd be no trouble, and I could return the favor, considering how you let me stay at your apartment yesterday. Staying at his place for the night, well, this certainly isn't how I expected to end my day. It isn't? Why? I'd love to know. But would it really be that bad? It definitely beats waiting out the storm and walking home with a bunch of puddles everywhere. How will you respond? Ah! Uh, I mean, I was going to pick spend the night. Where was I gonna go? Game. What if I did pick the um, the messed up one? I'm picking the the weird one, the staticky one. Ugh, if that didn't matter, I'm gonna be so sad. 
What was that? Did I really want to stay the night at everyone's place? I guess I did. I couldn't really remember otherwise. I guess I could stay the night, if that's really okay with you. Yeah, of course, it's totally fine. Wow. He really was an eccentric, energetic, eccentric man. Wasn't he? Nice. Let me know if you need any more pillows or blankets. Or if the room gets too cold, I haven't worked out how to use the fancy heater system yet. But I can definitely try. Um... What's happening here? I'm confused. Also, you already know where the bathroom is, but if you... Okay, I think I got it. I shoot him a reassuring smile as I turn to face him at the door. I should have gotten used to his attentive and obs observant behavior. But it still felt like a foreign side of him that I hadn't fully uncovered. Are we... Are we going in separate rooms? What is this, an arranged marriage? What the hell? Still, at least he wasn't stuttering as much anymore? I know, sorry. I just want you to be as comfortable as possible, so just... Treat this house like it's your own. Alright, gotcha. He looks like he doesn't want to leave, and instead lingers in front of the door a little while longer. Are you sure there isn't anything else you need? Anything at all? How will you respond? Yeah, I'm confused as to why. Yes! Oh my god! The confusion was washing over me. I was like, why are we going in separate rooms? What's happening here? What are we doing? <laughs> this isn't what I this isn't what I was asking for. Can I get a goodnight kiss? Boo. Can, I, can you sleep in my bed tonight? We're obviously gonna pick this, but it's like, what's this one? What's behind that locked door? Who cares? And we didn't even mention it before. So it's like, what are we doing here? Bro. Uh, it's like, come on. And then, no, I'm good. Thank you. Because that's such a smart choice. Go, go safe. But we're obviously picking this one. Duh. Duh. Sleep in your- um... Yes. Do you know what you're asking me? Wait. Are you asking me to- Do- <laughs> Deciding to put him out of his misery and answer his question by stepping closer towards his lanky frame. And into his personal space. Yes, Ren, I want to spend a bit more time with you. I don't want to be lonely. You don't want to be lonely, I mean... You're not sick of me yet. No. No. Ren's cheeks flush red as he awkwardly shuffles his way from one foot to the other. I watch as he begins to pick at the ends of his sleeves, perhaps out of habit, before he notices his actions and stops. Bright blue eyes look down at me, and I could practically feel the hope radiating from his body. Deciding to take the initiative, I step even closer to the pink-haired man and rest my hands against his sides. Yes? <laughs> without- Damn, this room is like... Yeah! <laughs> without missing a beat, I pull Ren into my room by the ends of his shirt, making sure to tuck him down and plant a kiss on his inviting lips in the process. He seemed surprised for a brief moment, if his wide eyes were any indication, but he quickly recovers by wrapping a large hand around my waist and pulling me closer to his body. Rests flush against his warmth now. I paid no mind to the cold bite of the wind outside his window. Alongside the uh, oh, ominous lulls of thunder off in the distance. And the streaks of lighting illuminating the dark sky. Somehow I felt f safe in his embrace. And the way he was pressing hot fervent kisses against my mouth made me forget about all the muted downpour of rain outside. Ren seemingly felt the same given how he didn't even bat an eye at the flash of lightning. Instead of appearing content with ho hoisting my legs around his waist and carrying me towards the edge of the bed. <laughs> well, that was rather bold of him. 
I let him take the initiative for the moment. I said that my hands aimlessly wander up and down the expansive. Expanse? Expands. <laughs> of his admittedly large chest before settling against the exposed skin just above his gray sweatpants. Instead. My sudden touch seems to pull the an audible gasp from Ren as his lips progressively leave my own to peer down at me instead. Bruh. You sure? You want to? Again? Don't ever ask me that ever again. Ren's eyes maintain that hopeful sheen to them, though I can tell by his hesitant hesitance that he didn't want to instigate anything without my consent. And so, with an affirmative nod, I close my eyes and press my body against his once more. Against his once more, as his mouth and teeth playfully return to that sensitive spot on my neck. Yes, I remember it. <laughs> the faint pitter-patter of rain against glass fills the empty silence in the room before it's replaced by the sounds of us falling into the mattress and a mess of tangled limbs and fervent kisses. The smell of fresh linen and soft sheets fills my senses until it slowly starts to morph into a vague visage of Ren, with his large frame blocking my view as he slowly crawls on top of me. Again. Cherry-tinted lips return once more in the form of frantic kisses and hushed moans as his hand roams up and down my sides in a soothing manner. His entire being overwhelms me, and I couldn't help but want to reciprocate his addictive menstruation. And so, almost unbashedly, I run my hands down the, warmth, the warm expanse of his chest once more before tugging at the hem of his shirt, indicating that I wanted him to take it off. But just like last time, Ren's hand moves to stop me once more. <laughs> Not yet. I still don't. I'm sorry. But I don't want to take it off just yet. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> Not wanting to startle him, I gently cup Ren's cheeks to give him some sort of reassurance. He had been nothing but patient and understanding with me during our last intimate encounter, so it was only fitting for me to return the favor. Whenever you're comfortable with- Oh, whatever you're comfortable with, Ren. His eyes seem to soften at my words the moment he hears them, so he sends me a blinding smile in response. <laughs> Large, gentle hands encompass my waist as Ren shifts his body closer, nuzzling his head into my neck before he speaks once more. You too. I only want to do what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Lifting his head, Ren's lips return to mine once again, and I kiss Ren back with the same amount of desire and ardor. <sighs> I can feel one of his hands chart a path down my side to play with the strings of his, my, my his shorts, uh, <laughs> before teasingly tugging them loose and slipping underneath. This is amazing. His hand doesn't go any further than my hip. By the way he touched me, but the way he touched me felt different somehow. It'd barely been a day since we lad did, last did this, yet it seemed as though Ren was a completely different person at this time. His touch felt more practiced and confident, and it was almost like he wasn't holding back himself anymore. His kisses, however, were all too familiar. I could practically feel the adoration and devotion with every press of his lips. And the faint taste of mint brought back those intimate memories shared in the darkness of my bedroom. Actually? Actually? His voice is nothing but a whisper against my skin before he draws back slightly to look into my eyes. I watch on the- I watch with bated breath as he continues speaking. Can we try something different tonight? Ren's timid tone catches me off guard, 
but I look up only to see him sporting an inquisitive glint in his eyes. Curious and perhaps a little out of breath from the heated makeout session we just shared, I raise my eyebrow at Ren's sudden, Ren sudden request, but allow him to continue nonetheless. No way. Stop. No. He's not gonna do what I think he's doing. Either. No. He's not gonna do it. No. Mm -mm. He's not gonna do what I think he's gonna do. Obviously, right? Alright. Let's, uh... Let's continue, though. Here. Lay back. Okay. With his honeyed voice as soft as his gaze, Ren gently pulls me towards the end of the bed by my hips. No way. No way. A puff of laughter escapes my throat at the sudden of motion, before it abruptly morphs into a moan. As Rin situates himself, situates himself between my thighs instead. No way. No way. And despite the heavy tension in the air, I hear something fall from the pillows above my head and begrudgingly look up to see what it is. My mind barely has a moment to process the Haruko's- the Haruko- oh, I've been saying that wrong the whole time. <laughs> the Haruko plush leading on its side. Did Ren really go out of his way to buy this for me? Before he easily twists my legs over his shoulder. No fucking way. No way. Oh shit. Hoist my legs over his shoulders and steals my attention once more. Huh. That's, uh. Huh. Um. I, what the f? I watch on with avid curiosity as Ren shoots me an unreadable grin in return, barely drawing my focus away from his hands as they slowly travel down my sides to hook themselves in the waistband of my shorts. So that's what we had in mind. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. Catching on quickly, I lift my hips <laughs> to let Ren remove them alongside my panties. One of the only particles of clothing left that hadn't been soaked by the rain. <laughs> Maybe by something else. You never know. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. Last time this type of scene was featured was in Rotten Dinner. And I fucking love that game. Now completely bare before him, I felt the urge to turn to my side and hide away from his heavy gaze, but the lustful look in his eyes convinces me to stay put. It's, um, wow. I'm still a little flabbergasted. Almost shaking in anticipation, I watch as his hand travels lower and lower until. <laughs> Just that. Cold fingertips brush against my inner thigh as Ren places butterfly kisses against my left ankle. <laughs> his descent is slow, deliberate, and ardent. Before his soft lips meet the space near his fingers, I can feel his mouth move against my skin before my pleasure-filled mind can process his words. <laughs> oh my god. Go ahead. Just lay back. You don't need to do anything. Ren's blue eyes shine faintly in the darkness, and I could catch the softest hint of mischief behind them. <sighs> Let me take care of you. Squeezing my eyes shut, I feel his lips leave a trail of wet kisses against my skin. Closer and closer until...
that. <laughs> oh my. Um. How will you respond? How will I respond? Wait, let me give you guys some context. Um, after we finished doing what we just did, uh, the soft patter of rain and thunder still echoes in the distance, coupled with Ren's soft breathing, giving me a moment to myself to think. How do I feel about Ren? How do I feel about Ren? After what we just did? Let's see the options. I'm crushing on him. I like him. He's alright. He's creepy. He's creepy? For doing what he just did? You're a fucking idiot. That one. Okay, so maybe I did find him rather endearing and attractive. Ren was very considerate and attentive towards me during our date. And I could see myself wanting to go on another date in the near future. And there was also the fact that we'd gotten intimate twice. Surely that was saying something about my feelings for Ren. He certainly had boyfriend material. Potential. But I still needed to work up the nerve to make it lead towards that direction. It's just, he seemed confident in every other aspect though. Which is still a bit confusing to me. Ah oh well, just knowing Ren wanted to spend the entire day with me is enough. Rolling onto my side, I reach for the discarded plushie. So I can be surrounded by his comforting scent and slowly drift off to sleep. End of day two demo. Huh? That was day two of 14 days with you. Honestly, wow. Right? <laughs> that was literally amazing. I don't have any notes. There's nothing to say. I don't have any complaints. Everything was great. Perfect day. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> joining me on with this, this game here. <laughs> <sighs> if you guys are excited for day three, because I'm going to figure out how to fix it and get it to work, because I don't know why I didn't just... I'll fix it. Leave the leave a like for me, please. And subscribe, because, yeah, this game is definitely something I'm going to continue for a while. So with all of that being said, <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Goodbye, my loves. <laughs>